How many times have you blamed yourself for when something went wrong? And how many times have you thanked yourself for when something went right? My name is Capo Corleone. I'm a rapper based out of Los Angeles, California. My name is Kuba Wiancek. I'm a music producer from Warsaw, Poland. And this is Thank Myself. Wake up in the morning, I gotta thank myself. It was two and a half years ago. I was transitioning from a jazz musician to a music producer. I started making my first beats and I was thinking of people I could work with. And I knew that piano player Claudia Kudarko was married to an American rapper called Capo Corleone. So I just wrote to Claudia, hey, can you send my beats to Capo? She, she did that and Capo replied, hey, I really like your music. Let's start working together. Yeah. It was on Instagram too, which I thought was really cool because, you know, at the height of 2020, everybody's locked down. Uh, for myself as a musician and probably yourself as well, we didn't really know, you know, what was going to happen to music and, and being a musician because, you know, art's always the first thing that, that suffers in the world. Claudia tells me about it. Hey, this guy Kuba's going to reach out to you. Okay, cool. So I get the, the DM, right? And I'm like, oh, who's this guy? All right. Oh, this is him, right? So I'm listening to the, uh, the stuff you sent over. And I thought it was really cool because you would send over production. I would send back vocals. Yeah. It really forced us to connect and, you know, an unorthodox way, like mm -hmm. via Instagram yeah. and trade back and forth. At the time I had owned a studio and you know, nobody was at the, the studio at all. So everybody had to learn how to collaborate in a new yeah. way. It was great because that's how it started for us. And then, you know, fast forward, I'm, I'm sitting at your studio in Warsaw and then you come back to Los Angeles and we're at our studio and then we're filming a music video. And sooner or later we were like, hey, well, let's just make an album together. Why wouldn't we? And uh, it was real organic. It was real different and it was outside of my comfort zone probably yours as well mm -hmm. because you being in jazz you're on stage with a bunch of people all the time yeah me being a studio musician i'm in the studio all day long with different mm -hmm. people so creating on our own but then coming together to put the finishing touches or do new stuff was uh, a really interesting and cool process and it was really, you know, a two and a half year process to make this album because we recorded a bunch of songs and we only yeah. released in, you know, seven, which uh, I think also is a testament to us taking our time with our art and really being deliberate about what we put out there. And I really like that our album includes uh, both songs that have been recorded remotely but also you know songs that we have been like working together in, in a studio yeah because when it came to warsaw for the first time so we really uh, have some very special moments out there i think it that also changes the creative process because yeah. uh, instead of it all being hey we did this remotely mm -hmm. or hey we did this collaboratively in whoever studio or whatever continent we were on uh, it gives it a little bit different flavor. Yeah. You know, with track like Breeze, I got sent the piece of production and quite literally I'm sitting uh, downtown uh, driving right next to LA Live and I hear this come on because mm -hmm. I'm playing all the production that you play and I literally pulled over to the side yeah. of the street mm -hmm. and wrote the first verse <laughs> within like five minutes. And, uh, you know, even one line where I said, because it favored that bold. I've been that boss since the day I was a Jetsco, mm -hmm. right? So fortune favors the bold literally was a sign right next to LA Live. Wow. And I put that into my, my lyrics because I heard that beat at that time. I pulled over and I was like, okay, let me write this. I looked up and I was like, oh, I'm gonna put that in there <laughs> because that looks cool. Um, so I think it was great because it also gave me uh, a chance to be in my own element mm -hmm. by myself to be, you know, even driving down the, the, the side of the road here to, to write something, but also, you know, be in the studio with you yeah. um, to uh, make music mm -hmm. that we both had input on. Yeah. Um, but I think it was also super important for us to both have our, our separate time to put our own spin on it. As I'm from Poland, we have a big tradition of having strong melodies in our music. This is something I was trying to bring for this album. But at the same time, I'm a jazz musician, so the rhythms were always very important to me. 
and I think uh, rhythms and like drums are a crucial part on this album. I think that was really the the really cool thing about me working with you is you did have that jazz background. I felt a lot of times when you know I would work with producers in the past, they would just send me a beat, and that's where the collaboration ended. I think from you know your side of things as a jazz musician, you're used to improvisation and building on each other's strengths, which I think really made the difference in this album. Um, and I felt, you know, a real connection as far as like a true partnership there, mm -hmm. um, as opposed to just, hey, here's a beat, have a great time, rapper, yeah. and you know, tell me when it's done. And also, you know, um, in jazz music, we like improvise a lot, and I thought that our process was kind of like a improvisation. Whereas, you know, you just came to my studio in Warsaw, and, and we just made those songs from the. Like we didn't have any like thoughts before. We just started, you know, doing what, who we, we were at that time. The album, you know, as far as like what you can expect, there's a lot of highs and lows in the album. You have, you know, a song like Fly where you're on top of the world. And then, you know, the next moment you're at Nostradamus, which you're at the, the bottom of, of feelings, feeling bad about yourself, but still remaining optimistic. And then you have breaks where it's like the process between it all and, you know, your everyday life which I thought was cool because when we do start talking about like, you know, stocks and cryptocurrency and stuff, it's like all those things that happen in between life that yeah. like, you know, you're not going to make a song about, but it ends up leaking its way into it, which is, you know, really a true uh, calling to what the process of Thank Myself is all about. Uh, I was trying to bring out of hip hop inspired, like African music inspired drums. W what I like to do when I make music is record my live instruments and then, then treat those recordings as a samples. So for example, when I was doing Breeze, I would record my saxophone and then like uh, cut it and play with it. And like this whole beat is actually based on my saxophones uh, that are processed in like, uh, I don't know, uh, some electronic way and then I, I put some like drums that are maybe coming from like electronic music or like from dance music I don't know and I don't know it just uh, thought that it was quite an inspiring like piece for you to wrap over yeah it was really dope I think the cool thing about Breeze for me was uh, I wasn't just a rapper at that point because you know your sax was so raw at the beginning of it yeah. I felt like I can go in there and like mold my voice as an instrument as opposed to just being a rapper on a beat mm -hmm. and i thought that was really cool because you know it's not often that i'll sit there and think oh well let me use my own voice as an instrument as yeah. opposed to hey let me spit the dopest flow that i can possibly <laughs> spit it was more like hey like what's good for this song and i felt it was really great that it was so raw mm -hmm. as far as like the sax at the beginning because i was able to really use that as you know a, a a spitball point where I could just really start rapping how I want it to uh, sound um, and I felt like it, it really worked at the end of the day. Yeah, I think we can we are really, really like uh, pushing some boundaries with this album like what hip hop can mean mm -hmm. in, in the future. I think like we did something special like like both like hip hop or jazz listeners can have a lot of fun and adventure listening to this music. Yeah, I 100% I agree. I felt it was really cool for us to, you know, have a, a tradition for myself growing up on the West Coast and spending time between, you know, my home of Los Angeles and, and San Francisco to really take, you know, that, that hip hop culture that I grew up around and, you know, have had ingrained in my life since I was a kid. And then you'd also have your jazz background yeah. and, and, and culturally Polish sounds mm -hmm. for some of the records. It was really great, just a combination and really just uh, an array of like eclectic sounds that you just don't normally hear in, in most hip hop. But it's, I think, something that we can expect from this album when it comes to sound. Feeding off of other people's energy is super important. So, you know, when you talked about breaks and you made me sing, uh, I think I was sitting there and you were like, hey, you should probably do this. And I was like, what, like this? And then you kept the first take. Mm. And I was like, dude, like, why did you do that? Like, <laughs> that sounds so garbage. Mm -hmm. But then you were like, no, like, it's really gonna Trust bring me. it out. <laughs> Trust me. So then when I heard it in the mix, I thought to myself, God, like, I would have never done that if it was just me in the room recording myself or working with another engineer who was not the producer. Mm -hmm. But when we actually got into the studio in Warsaw mm -hmm. and the studio in Los Angeles, we had a lot of those moments mm -hmm. where you know, you were like, hey, why don't you try this or you try that? Mm -hmm. And sometimes I said, hey, man, I really like this or that. And you would 
really adapt mm -hmm. at that point, which I felt was really a true collaboration for what we were doing. Yeah. It wasn't a, a Capo Corleone record, mm -hmm. it was a Capo Corleone and Cuba Viencic record, which is really cool and it's the reason why this is an album with both of our names on it, mm -hmm. not just a rapper with a producer in the <laughs> credits, <laughs> because you were as much as an artist on this as I was, and the input that you had was super valuable for mm. me. And I, I feel like it was valuable for you as well to yeah. hear that input from me coming from the background that I came from. Mm. Even with a, a song like Fly, uh, you know, putting Zally on that record, yeah, who yeah. I never knew who she was. I was like, man, that was like the best addition you could have mm -hmm. put on this record, which really was impressive. You really took it upon yourself to also like A&R and like mm -hmm. executive mm -hmm. produce stuff, mm -hmm. which most people do not do. Mm. So I, I thought that was really dope for most of the records to really have that input and really, you know, our feelings and, you know, even writing some of the lyrics for other artists, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, which was uh, really cool on my part to step outside of just writing a rap yeah. or, or just rapping in the moment mm -hmm. with a stream of consciousness or whatever it was. I had to step outside of my bubble and say, oh, I'm gonna write this for a singer, mm -hmm. or I'm gonna write this this melody. Yeah. And it was um, really great, and it was a great growth moment, mm -hmm. and ultimately was the reason why these records were so different and so interesting, was that collaborative effort. Mm -hmm. From a music producer perspective, I have seen something very special about Capo already on our first meeting when he came to my studio in Warsaw. I was very surprised and happy how open uh, he was for new challenges and then how perfectly he was executing them staying very natural in new situations and this is like very rare thing and as a mu music producer I, producer I really appreciate those things because they, they can bring our music to a completely new level. Thank you Kapo. Yeah I think, uh, I think it was really dope that uh, when we did work together, you would actually push me to do new things that were super outside of my comfort zone, things that I normally would not do. And uh, I felt like it made me take a little bit more risks with what I was doing um, on the mic and, and creatively. You would say, hey, Capo, do that in falsetto. I was like, bro, what are you talking about? You want me to do that in falsetto? Like, who am I, Mariah Carey, you know? Like, and so, I remember doing it and you're like, no, just just trust me, do that in falsetto, you know, behind it, I'm gonna make it sound cool. And, you know, I did it and I was really pleased with it. And I felt like a lot of the times you would push me to do things that were super outside of my comfort zone, which would actually get me to take some risks with, you know, what I was laying down in, in the booth. And, you know, after I did it, I was like, wow, okay, I would have never actually pushed myself to do that. I listened to you and I did it and I, I think, um, you know, being open to that is one thing, but also like it's a real testament to you as a producer to say, hey, like, I'm gonna push this guy to do something different. That's, you know, what the Dr. Dre's, the Pharrell's, uh, those types of producers will do for their artists is really push them to do things outside their comfort zone. And I really enjoyed that about working with you is that you would do that. And that's something I think is missing with a lot of artists and producers mm -hmm. when they collaborate. Uh, and I really enjoyed that because it really helped me step outside of my comfort zone and create something great and new and fresh. I thought it was cool though, because it helped me, you know, push boundaries that I normally wouldn't push, take risks. And ultimately it really helped push the records in different directions mm -hmm. than I would have been able to do on my own. And so I really appreciated that about uh, working with you as a producer. I was also surprised how quick you would write all the lyrics. I remember when you came to my studio and we started w working on breaks, you literally in like half an hour wrote all the lyrics and that was, you know, just like, almost like a freestyle. Yeah, uh, it was really cool. You know, I, I had a lot that was going on at the time and uh, sometimes when I have like a, a stream of consciousness and you know, I'm just writing down all my feelings or whatever. We had, you know, lunch right before that and we're talking about like current affairs and like what's going on in the world. And yeah. I had been traveling for three months between North America and Europe and I was taking all the inspiration that I had from the cultures that were surrounding me. I had all this inspiration from being in a different place, but also just 
living life for the last three months and actually not being in a studio for three months, yeah. which is, you know, rare for me. Mm -hmm. I felt that uh, maybe a producer that is not from the U.S. would not have what I felt would be the right production for me as a hip hop artist in the U.S. But I was really mistaken because you not only listen to a lot of the artists that are here that will influence you, but you bring different influences outside of what I am normally accustomed to, which actually pushed me to be better and different. And, you know, it was a, a an assumption that, you know, maybe I'm not so proud of. I assumed that maybe the production would be more in line with what hip hop was popular in Europe at the time, which, you know, I, to be honest, I wasn't listening to. So, you know, I assumed that maybe the adaption to you know, American hip hop would be a little bit different and maybe the sounds weren't gonna be right in the vein, but they were right in the vein and they were different. And I thought that was a, a really cool realization that I had and it was really one of the reasons why I, I enjoyed working with you a lot. For me, you know, I, when I was sending you those first beats, I was afraid that, uh, I don't know, like as I'm coming from jazz background, like jazz musicians, tend to like make things over complex mm -hmm. so I just thought that I don't know that you would just maybe uh, say that I don't know they are like too, too complicated or something but you were like very open and you like really appreciated what, what I was coming from and you know I really appreciate that you know because you, you really allowed me to be myself in this whole situation. My favorite record on the album is Nostradamus because it's a really personal song for me it's really the thread of my life, you know, from all the, the trials and tribulations I've gone through. And, and um, I thought it was a nice uh, point in the album, you know, being, you know, 80% of the way through the album, it was the first verse of me talking about all the things that I had gone through from my childhood to being a young adult to the end of it, where I'm telling a story about where I am now and what I hope for in the future but almost like i'm sitting on a dock on a beach telling this story to somebody that'll that'll hear it and it was great because kuba actually felt that emotion and when he had his solo in the middle of the song between the two verses they really hit much harder and he really conveyed the emotion that i was conveying in my lyrics with his sax and it was really awesome for him to pick up on that. So for me, Nostradamus is definitely the the best song on the album, if not my favorite song that I've ever made in my life, realistically, because it was so personal, but it was just so beautifully executed on, on both of our sides. And I, I really felt that it, it is by far my best work and, and most personal work. I really love the moment in Nostradamus when the like the second part starts. Like I think this is like really like an epic moment. Yeah. yeah but at the same time, for me, like the the song I will remember the most for sure it's uh, Breaks because like it just you know uh, for me like the, the first time we ever met and there's like so many memories to it and also like the way it grooves is like so special and. I don't know, it's, I think it's, it's such a great song. It's a pretty dope track. Yeah. I, uh, I definitely have felt releasing it as the first single and, and the music video that, that, that came with it. Yeah. It's definitely become a fan favorite for mm -hmm. a lot of people. I think once people actually listen to the album and they get to, you know, Nostradamus, they get to home, they get to Breeze. Yeah. That's really going to solidify it and, and keep it there and, and keep them engaged in the mm -hmm. story. Thank myself is the human experience. We fall down, we get back up, we keep going. This record is quite literally my process with that. I want to encourage everybody to thank themselves for their scars, their pain, their rejection, and to show themselves gratitude for getting through it and having the will to keep going. That's what thank myself is all about. Thanking yourself for the perseverance, the success, and the trials and tribulations that got you to the point where you are now. But thank yourself before anyone else. Thank myself is now out everywhere you can stream music. Check it out. Bump it in your car, bump it at home, bump it at your grandmama's house, whatever. Dziękuję. Whatever he said. <laughs>